Good day, Creator Spirit. We'll start our session today with hymn 822 in Voices United, which is Psalm 100. Voices, uh, number 138, My Love Colors Outside the Lines. And we'll certainly be doing some of that today. My Love Colors Outside the Lines. <laughs> Thank you. 
Sunday, this coming Sunday is, if you can believe it, Reign of Christ Sunday. It is. <clears throat> and oftentimes, on Reign of Christ Sunday, uh, Psalm 100 is sung and read, and I believe actually, certainly this, um, uh, we're in what year A, uh, this one of the lectionary readings is Psalm 100 for this coming Sunday. And so I have um, an inclusive language version of Psalm 100. We also sang Psalm 100, <clears throat> pardon me, as our first hymn. And here we go. Here is Psalm 100. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come into the divine presence with a song. Know this, the Lord, the Lord is God, the one made us and to whom we belong. We are God's people, the sheep of God's pasture. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving. Go into these courts with praise. Give thanks to God and call upon the name of the Lord. For the Lord is good whose steadfast love is everlasting, and whose faithfulness endures from age to age. And now a reading um, from our We Make the Road by Walking, and this is coming from chapter 12, and it's called Living by a Different Interpretation. About 10 centuries after King David, when Jesus came on the scene, many were still waiting for a son of David, a militant Messiah, to swoop in someday, fix everything, and usher in Golden Age 2.0. They expected this warrior king to raise a revolutionary army, overthrow their oppressors, and restore civil law and religious order. In anticipation of the warrior king's arrival, some were sharpening daggers and swords. But Jesus was living by a different interpretation of the old stories, so he refused to conform to their expectations. Instead of arming his followers with daggers, swords, spears, chariots, and war horses, he armed them with faith, hope, service, forgiveness, and love. When he healed people, he didn't tell them, I will save you, or my faith will save you, but your faith has saved you. Working from a fresh interpretation of the past, he freed them from both passive, pious complacency and desperate, violent action. His fresh interpretation empowered them for something better, faithful, peaceful action. And so to that, I want to, um, for our prayer today, I would like to give you a different interpretation of the Lord's Prayer. And this coming Thursday, uh, November the 20th, is the um, Trans Transgender Day of Remembrance every November 20th. And this is a, um, the Lord's Prayer for Transgender Awareness. So a different interpretation, a different interpretation that will hopefully um, bring peace and strengthen faith. Right? Let us pray. Our mother and father, our beloved parent in whom we move and breathe and have our being, the hallowing of your name shines forth in the diversity of your children. May your peace and love, justice and equality, inclusion and belonging reign here on earth as in heaven. Grant that our transgender loved ones might have their daily needs met, that they might find gainful employment without discrimination, that they might have access to medical care without fear that they might have their rights and lives protected, and that they might find a loving community to belong to and call their own. Forgive us for the ways that we have fallen short 
and failed your transgender children. Forgive us of the times we turned away or did not care, for the times we laughed or judged their unique expression of your image, for the times we have misspoken, asked too much, or failed to hear, as we forgive those who might have failed us. Lead us away from the temptation to be complacent in the face of injustice, but instead give us courage to stand up and stand with your beloved children. For your love and justice is to be made manifest now and forever. Amen. Okay. So this morning, we are going to be doing our interpretation of um, our reign of Christ. And this, so if you looked at the examples that I had sent you, um, here was sort of one, um, much like one of the examples that I had uh, sent out. And so just to go over, first of all, the colors that we're using. So we're using the liturgical calendar colors. So we'll start with our blue, and I have offset this, and I'll tell you why in a minute. So we start with our blues, purple, red, green, and then orange. And initially, I decided that I didn't want, as far as the, the uh, liturgical calendar goes, of course, it starts here with Advent, right? Um, and then the white rings are part of the white that's added in with the, the calendar. The, there is gold in it as well because oftentimes um, gold is uh, interchangeable on some uh, occasions with the white and then of course the black. Um, when I was doing this, when I made out the sections initially and I thought, well, I don't want the, <laughs> I don't, I took an artist, artistic um, version and said, I don't want the little, I don't want blue, I don't want the advent blue in the little corner. Um, so I offset them. That's, as an artist, you can do your own interpretation, right? Um, you can do however you so choose at this point. And um, so let's just go ahead. Uh, you'll need a canvas. Now this canvas is 16 by 20. 16 by 20 sounds big. And when it's blank, it might look big, but for what we are doing, um, really it's, it's, it's not. In fact, um, this larger canvas makes life a whole lot easier. Um, okay, so what we will, the first thing you're going to need to do is decide how you want to represent your colors. Um, now, if you go with white, and gold and black being your accent colors, then you have five other colors to work with, right? And you can decide then how you might want your five colors to position on the canvas. You might prefer to do them uh, just like this in straight lines, right? do and and do them exactly in order advent lent um pentecost ordinary time and the only reason that i'm putting ordinary time in this place is because the larger chunk of ordinary time happens during the summertime and then time of creation you could do them in that you could do them in any order that you want so there's one option you could do them in um these if you want. This was another of, sort of, a, of one of the examples that I had sent out where you could do it in this sort of shape. Um, perhaps this appeals to you. Maybe for you, maybe there is something, um, maybe one season speaks to you far more than any other season and that season you could put in the center and then have the other four seasons around it. Perhaps um, because God is all encompassing um, and perhaps it is not so much for you about any one specific season that it happens, it flows from one another. Um, you could just then have your canvas and lay in the colors sort of randomly and in more places than one, right? You could just take a sponge and drop some colors 
directly on the canvas, sponge it out, blend them together so you have this, this amazing flow of color. And then you can add all of your um, other pieces to it, your accents, like be them splashes, be them the color, like the circles. And I like the circles, of course, because there is no beginning, there is no end. Um, or any other, um, perhaps there are symbols, perhaps you would like the little uh, Jesus fish on it somewhere, whatever sort of speaks to you. I want you to give some prep, like some uh, preparatory thought to this um, somewhere along the line, just to sort of give yourself an idea of where you're headed. Um, once you've decided where you've had, where you're heading, then all of the other stuff will happen sort of um, as art happens. Um, it will have a life of its own. But here's how you're going to start. Once you have decided, you know, which which one of these, or maybe, you know, it could be this way across your canvas. Nothing needs to say that the canvas has to be this way, right? It could be this way. You could do it this way and have the lines going. Right? That is your interpretation of um, the reign of Christ. I'm just going to put this back up here so we have reference. Um, okay, now the things that you will need, aside from the canvas, um, you will need acrylic paint in the colors of the uh, liturgical calendar. So blue, purples, uh, oranges, green, red, your black, white, and gold as your accent colors. Um, and, and again, shades, it's up to you. Whatever you feel um, speaks to you most about the shades of those particular colors, that's okay. Whichever speaks to you. The other things that you will need are some uh, water. You will need uh, some damp cloths, fingers and things, because it, it, you, you're going to get some paint on you. Um, if you happen to have uh, an old uh, towel or an old face cloth um, dampened, that will come in handy today too. Um, perhaps a metallic marker um, or just your Sharpie markers for adding detail or perhaps words, right? There's nothing to say that you can't add words on your piece as well. Uh, a few paint brushes. Um, I only ended up using, I think actually, maybe one or two, maybe only one. I'm trying to think of it, I think I only use this one. I think this was the only, this was the only paintbrush I think I ended up using. Um, and you, you could use a foam brush instead, uh, something to stir paint with, um, just because the splatter, if you need to water it down a bit, that helps. So something to stir paint with. And then the, a glass or, uh, a plastic lid, even the lids off the <laughs> off the paint uh, bottles, you could use those lids. Um, I've just got a, a plastic glass here so that I could use either this rim for the circles and then the bottom rim for the circles as well. Um, or perhaps check, and I always say this, I know, but it's good to check your recycle bin. Um, <laughs> if you've got the, right, the old tape uh, rolls, the tape rolls, either the plastic, the scotch tape ones, those will make great for, um, and then just hang on to them, put them in your box for future uh, reference, because we certainly use these things more than once. The uh, tape roll, that will work as well. And what am I missing? I know I'm missing something. Oh, cardstock. So the cardstock, um, if you've got a couple sheets of cardstock around, great doesn't matter what color it's not you're not going to be drawing or anything on it what you're actually going to be using it for is um, part of this um, I don't know how well you can see it but there are lines see all these straight lines and everything that's all done with the edge of the cardstock um, we've used in past pieces we have used um, credit card something like this or the loyalty cards on the edge. Um, the only reason that I suggest this is because we're dealing with a much larger surface, right? So it would be much like this kind of action. And you just lay the paint right on here and 
go to it. And then after you're done with that edge, you can go to another edge. And as you see, I've already used these other edges over here. So I've torn those off. Um, all right. Now, the beauty of this particular piece, and uh, again, play your music, right? Is that there, this is, this looks a lot, well, maybe it doesn't look exact, but it really, I mean, it's really not exact. It's fun. So like I say, once you've decided what um, version you want to do, um, you can tape your lines, and I forgot my tape, but you can, if you're doing the straight up and down like this, or even if you were doing it diagonally and you want to tape your lines so that you've got a um, straight white border between them, your sections of the calendar, that's fine. And then what you could do is actually, um, you could use that white space for words, right? Things that mean the most to you in each of those seasons. Um, things that um, maybe phrases that come to mind of uh, some of Jesus's words that you want to write in those, that's a great idea too. Um, but I will show you um, essentially how we are going to go ahead and do this and the inexactness of it all. Um, and I forgot to get my palette. All right, we're gonna create a palette here. <laughs> like live television, right? Just never know. Could stop the recording and then start. Okay. Here's how we're going to do this. I'm just going to take some black paint and I'm just going to show you on a piece of paper some of these ideas. All right. And I'm just going to squeeze a little black paint onto my palette, wet my brush just a little bit here. So take a little, little of the black paint. And so we actually start with the black lines. However, and you know what, let's just, I'm just gonna do them, you know, diagonally. And we're not worrying too much about how specific they are. We're just sort of drawing them. And they could be, they can, Go angular, they could, I mean, goodness, one, two, they could even do this. Three, just cause. And then four, five. Right, and this is not, you'll see that these are not, I'm not spending too much time on these lines. I'm just went ahead and, and painted them out. They weren't even necessarily full solid paint. They're just more, at this point, indicator lines, right? And then you're going to need to do, start to fill in those sections. So, and it, it doesn't, again, doesn't matter with where you start. Um, but one thing you might find like with this, what I did was I added, um, I didn't have necessarily all the right shades of a lighter shade of purple and a dark shade of purple and a lighter shade of blue and a dark shade of blue. So all I did was I had one color and white, right? Dropped the dark purple on the canvas, uh, dark added some, a little dark purple and then added some white here and then just mixed it all together. And then you can always add more to get the, the tone that you want. All right, let's see here. Let's just start with the purple. And um, I'm just going to drop the purple in. And that's probably all. And then I'm going to drop in some white on the other side. Or maybe at the and it doesn't matter where exactly as whether it's you know on one down here you go lighter to darker here whichever you're going to do um it yeah it's there's no no right or wrong you know you know the rule there is no wrong and all i'm doing then is literally this is a little awkward um 
but then just filling it in and I'm going to need more. So now at this point, it's all mashed into being light. So I'm going to add some more purple. And you could sponge it in, you could use, oh, that was the other thing, um, the little makeup sponges. You could use the little makeup sponges. Yeah, I want a little more white here. It's not quite as carefully as I wanted. Okay. Well, there we have our first section. And you would just go, and you'll notice that I've went, I've gone over the black. If the black is blurred in a bit, that's okay. Um, and then you go ahead and you do the other sections. And once you have done those sections, the next thing that you're going to want to do is redo your black lines. And you'll also want to get your cloth that, or the towel, the towel or the old face cloth ready as well. And I'm hoping this will work on the acrylic paper versus the canvas, it worked fine. Um, maybe, let's just try, because acrylic, depending on how thick your acrylic paint is, we've talked about how that it does dry quickly. So my suggestion would be that um, when you redo your line, again, a little make sure the brush is wet. When I redo the line, I'm just going to freshen the line and make sure that there's a decent amount of paint there. Freshen up the line. And then I'm going to take my towel and I'm just going to dab that, that um, wet black paint with my damp towel or face cloth. And you'll see that it creates this. Hopefully, there we go. It creates this really smoother, almost shadowed line, right? And the, the examples are even on this piece here, sort of that giving that a little bit of, of depth. I could have gone a little more, but you'll see that, that it's not just that sharp black line. It's a little softer. It makes it look a little more three-dimensional, adding that shadow like that. And then what I would do when I add the next color, Right, I add the next color wherever. Um, don't shadow this side, shadow only this side. So you always want the, it's the, about the light coming down right from one side. So when you redo this line, you're going to sort of do that um, towel trick with this line, not on this side. Um, now you could, I shouldn't say that. You could, and it would instead it would be like an overhead or that they would be stacked. So maybe that's like with the, um, where is it? This example, you could actually do that sort of shadowing effect all the way around. Uh, you could do it on all the way around the square and make it really seem like it's just popping right off the page. Okay. Once you've done all of the lines, you've filled in the colors, you've redone the lines, you've done the little towel trick there. Uh, then it is time to really explore um, how you want to do your um, added added bits of, of rings or splatters or um, lines. So, and if you decide that you don't want to use the black and the white and the gold as accent colors and you want to include them, 
you could do perhaps um, a black and a white and gold, do three colors like on your paper somehow, and then do uh, re representing sort of um, a Christ at all times, and then do just all of your circles um, or your, your um, paper splotches with the colors and do it that way, do the opposite. Um, things to think about. So we take a uh, cup and I've got um, some white. And actually, I'll put on, we could do, could do it this way. This is easy. You could just do it on your finger and go straight from your finger onto the cup. Didn't even have to use the palette. Just some paint on there. And then just go ahead and wherever you want, right? Create a circle. Now these do not have to be perfectly filled circles. If you want to do that and then twist a bit and give it a um, more definition, that's fine. Um, you can go on the other side of this, this cup. So that's got a, a larger end. But if you want a smaller, thinner circle, you're just running the paint around this thinner edge. And you'll see that that is a thinner. Right. And you're going to get paint on your, yeah, paint everywhere. Um, then what you could do too is you could add the black. Um, you could go back over those circles with uh, the gold or the black, like right on it, gives a little definition, um, or just, just off-centered. Right. Um, so I'm just going to add some gold to the rim. And sort of somewhat over the top of the same or anywhere else or part of only part of it. You get the idea. Right. Um, and then you can do that however, wherever, as much as you would like. Then you can also with the card stock and then, where's my black? Oh, here's my black. Mm. Take your, and I've just, like I said, I've just folded it over just because it's a little easier to deal with. Um, but you can actually add the paint. You don't have to even put this paint on your palette. You can just add a little paint right to the edge here. Just smear it along the edge, right? And then, just give in whichever direction. And if you want them to be a little thicker, then just smear it down this way. And again, this size is much easier to do on a large canvas, right? This is a little disproportionate. If I was doing a piece this small, I would likely um, either chop this piece of cardstock in half or use our, our other cards. Um, but you can just go ahead and do that in random places. You can add different color, right? Just go ahead and add a different color right on top of it. You don't need another clean piece of paper. Um, and then you can add splatter to it and splatter. Um, I found that actually one of the, um, the artists that I, and I'll leave the, the name of the artist in the link, it's in the stuff that I sent you, but I'll leave it in the um, in the video description. Um, he actually goes ahead, and I think it's about a 60% paint to 40% water, and just adds, and this time I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it in a little gold. Um, just a little bit, and really, you don't need a, a lot. You might find that you're, end up mixing up more than what you really planned on. Um, water. And then I'll take my, I just got a popsicle stick. Oh, that's really soupy. I knew that. 
See, didn't I just say? Did I not just say? <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. And actually, I didn't even use a brush. I ended up using the popsicle stick yesterday, which seemed to work fine. So I won't do it up here. Um, but you can, if you just, once you've got it uh, stirred up in your, in your uh, cup, then I just took the popsicle stick and literally just shook it. And I found that this was a little more controlled than with the brush. Um, still gave larger dots. And because it is liquidy, if, that if you were to put the canvas up upright, it would drip, which might be part of, because we've done lots of drips with watercolor before, right? Um, so I'll show you that. It's hard to see how hard it is. Let's see. You just go ahead and I kind of like the gold. Uh, yeah, I do kind of like the gold. It's a little hard to see now, isn't it? Um, and that, that's it. That's as easy peasy as it is. Uh, it kind of reminds me of this, right? Look at this, colors of the... <laughs> um, and yeah, and let, it, let your imagination go. So once you decide again, what, how you want these colors blocked out or whether you want, you don't, you don't want to block them out. You want to drop the paint, all the different colors, directly in different spots and then take your sponge brush and and carefully just sort of go ahead and give yourself all of these patchworky of, of color everywhere and then blend them in, wet your little makeup sponge a little bit, blend them in. And, um, and then you could always decide later whether you want to add the lines on top. Um, and one of the things that you might find, I mean, acrylic does dry quickly that uh, while I was doing the, when I went back, um, some of these sections, the purple was way too wet. I had laid it on a little too thick. Um, and when I went to do the, the, the cleaner black line, the thick purple, yeah, I had to let it dry before, um, it, like I said, it was too goopy and it wasn't giving me a good solid black. It was still mixing in too much. So that's just a note. Uh, that make that your layers need to be not too super thick. Now they could be if that's the look that you're going for, great. Um, but then give yourself the time to let it dry before um, some of those other added layers. And that is as simple as it is, and it's fun. And and I think that you could really start to get into um, really thinking about what reign of Christ means to you. That encompassing year of celebrations and journeys and um, maybe there's one season that sits more um, more important to you um, in your relationship with Christ than any other season then maybe you want to focus on that um, have some fun with it and pray over it and let's recenter and then we will uh, then we'll you can enjoy you can go and paint and create. So feet flat on the floor, backs up, and we're going to take a deep breath in, and you're going to, on that deep breath in, breathe in the love of God, and on the way back out, sending the love back out into the world, and another deep breath in, breathing in the love of God, Oh, and sending that love back out into the world. And one more deep breath in. And sending the love back out into the world. And together we say, Creator God, quiet my mind before it passes judgment on this prayer, my gift of time to you. Amen. So have a wonderful week. Um, enjoy this pre-celebration to Sunday, and um, I hope that as you find some some um, calm and some comfort and some perhaps some rejuvenation, that you also find your aliveness. Have a great week. <laughs>